The analogizer is a device that plugs into the cartridge port of the analog pocket and gives you the ability to play your games over a CRT television, taking you back to the days to how these games used to be played. This video will go over how to use the analogizer and show off some games being played. This is the analogizer. You can obtain it by going to its online store and placing an order. It costs 54 euros or 65 US dollars. Here's the cartridge connector that plugs into the pocket's cartridge port. This means that you won't be able to use physical cartridges. You will only be able to use open FPGA cores. There's a USB serial port that can be used with adapters that will allow you to connect original console controllers. You cannot use this port with standard USB controllers. This port must be used in conjunction with an adapter that conforms to the SNAC 7 protocol. These can provide controller ports for NES, Super NES, or other old school console controllers. Remember, it has to be a SNAC 7 adapter. Grabbing any similar looking USB adapter will not work. In the description, I will provide links to where you can obtain the appropriate adapters. On one side, there is a USB-C port to provide power to the adapter. A USB-C power adapter that supplies plus 5 volt power will be needed. The other side has an AB switch that reconfigures certain pins of the snack port to the pins on the cartridge. This should be left in the A position. The other position will be used for any future functionality. Newer revisions of the analogizer will have an SOG switch to enable sync on green. Important if you are going to use component or RGSB connections. The older revision is no longer being sold, so all analogizers being sold now are the newer revision. And there is the VGA port that will output the analog pockets video to a CRT. You will need a VGA to SCART adapter or a VGA to component adapter to accomplish this. I would like to thank Mr. Addons for sending me the VGA to SCART cable so I can test RGB. I want to know that I have an older revision of the analogizer that only supports RGB. The ones that are available now also support component video. But the older revisions will also support composite NS video through Mike Simone's YC adapter design. Now let's set up the analogizer. I recommend a VGA and USB 3.0 extension. If you plan on using external controllers, then a USB snack adapter probably won't fit next to the VGA plug. So as you can see here, a USB extension will solve that. A VGA extension is also recommended because the audio cable might not reach the pocket's headphone port. But you can still use a separate audio cable if you don't want to use a VGA extension or the adapter you are using does not have an audio cable. You will also need to install supported cores. The analogizer only works with cores that have specific support for it. Some cores that are supported are Neo Geo, NES, Super NES, Alpha Mission, and more. You can check the GitHub for the latest supported cores. You can either install these cores manually, or you can use one of the several Analog Pocket Updater apps to obtain them. I personally use Neil Morrison's Pocket Sync. Once you have all the requirements, plug the analogizer to the Analog Pocket's cartridge port, plug in a power adapter to the USB-C port of the analogizer, and then take the VGA to SCART or VGA to component cable and plug it into the analogizer and to your television. I'm using a SCART adapter, but I don't have a SCART television, so I'm using Mike Chi's RGB to comp adapter to convert the RGB signal from the analogizer to a component signal that's compatible with my television. To get audio out of the television, either plug in the audio cable that's built into the adapter, or use the audio cable of your choice and plug it into the headphone port of the analog pocket. Turn on the pocket. Don't worry if you see this bad header error. Just bring up the main menu, exit the cartridge, and load up OpenFPGA. Then load up a supported core and run a game. You should start seeing the game being output to your CRT. If you are having video issues, make sure you are using the correct analog option. 
to do that, bring up the course menu, select the analog settings, and try the option that matches your connection. Anyway, you can now start playing games now. This is the Neo Geo Core. Using the pockets controlled was very responsive. I felt no lag at all. So what if you don't have a television with RGB or component? Or if you are like me and prefer composite over those connections? Then you will be happy to know that composite and as video is supported via the use of Mike Simone's active YC design. However, if you have a transcoder that converts RGB to component slash as video, like this one from Antonio Villena, then you can accomplish the same thing, but with worse composite quality. Using this transcoder with composite or any transcoder that works the same way will give you some severe dot crawl around the edges of graphics that can be real distracting. Using that same transcoder with S video would resolve the issue. But with Mike Simone's adaptive design, it will eliminate these artifacts from composite and will also give you great S video output. The reason using a transcoder shows these artifacts is because of the RGB to composite conversion. Composite signals need to be tuned for each core. With Mike Simone's design, the composite signal is generated directly on the FPGA core itself. This allows specific tunings to eliminate the dot crawl artifacts matching what the original hardware output. Open FPGA cores that support the analogizer and have several options relating to it. I'll discuss some of these. There's an option to enable PAL, but that's the only signal your television supports. NTSC is a default output. There's the analog video menu that I showed earlier that lets you choose your RGB sync option or select component video, composite as video, and other options. I'll reiterate that component video and RGSB only work on the later revisions of the analogizer because it supports sync on green. My version does not, so I'm using Mike Chi's RGB to comp transcoder to get a component signal. If you find the pocket screen always on being distracting, then there's the blank pocket screen option to turn it off while still outputting to the CRT. For settings relating to snack, which allows you to use original retro controllers, you have the option to select the type of adapter you are using. For example, if you are using a Super NES adapter, then select the Super NES option. You can use any adapter with any core, like using a Super NES controller with a Neo Geo core. In the snack player options, you can use what controllers player one or player two are using. You have options like selecting player one using the pocket and player two using snack, player one using snack and player two using the pocket, both players using snack or both players using the pocket. And yes, if you use the analog pocket dock, you will be able to use regular USB controllers connected to the dock. Using the pockets controls was very responsive. I felt no lag at all. With a high frame rate camera at 240 frames per second, I measured input latency at around 20 milliseconds. But honestly, you want to use this with an external controller. It feels like you have a lot more freedom when doing so. Playing games using external controllers is done through the use of a special adapter that allows you to connect original console controllers. You can use Snack 7 adapters that are also compatible with the Mr. FPGA. You will be able to use any controller with any core. For example, I can use a Super NES controller with a Neo Geo core instead of being limited to just Neo Geo controllers. Unfortunately, light guns will not work due to the way the SNAC protocol is being implemented. External controllers were also very responsive. My high frame rate latency measurements were measured between 16.7 milliseconds and 25 milliseconds. It was hard to tell when the Super NES button was fully pressed. That's why I get variable results. I don't have an analog pocket dock so I cannot perform latency tests on standard USB controllers. I also performed display lag tests using Artemio's 240p test suite on a Neo Geo core. My test shows that the CRT is faster than the pocket screen by around 1.5 frames. Now let me show off some of the analogizer cores with games being played. There's not much to say about each core other than they run and look great on a CRT. Remember to check the GitHub to see the latest cores with analogizer support.
During the making of this video, there have been more options and more cores added with analogizer support. The analog output options got a scan doubler super VGA output mode and the PC engine, PC engine CD and IRAM M92 cores receive analogizer support. Remember updates are always being made. A quick way to see if new cores received support is to open up Neil Morrison's pocket sync and do a search for analogizer. The results will display all cores that support it and if any of your existing cores have updates. And that's the analogizer. It's a really cool way to connect the pocket to a CRT. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and its bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.